Saba Saba, Uganda represent. Yeah, Africa channel. You know what it is. <laughs> I'm from Uganda, born in a village of Jinja. When I turn 25, I call myself Saba Saba. Saba Saba is 77. Seven. It means 77 seven in Swahili, and I was born in 77. And that has always been my lucky number. It's a blessing being here. Cup of coffee. Watch out. In Uganda, Saba Saba represents the regime that the weapon that chest Idi Amin out of Uganda. And I call myself Saba Saba because I'm that weapon with my lyrics, the way I portray what I talk about. So I call myself Saba Saba for that. I come from a family of musicians. I, when I started doing music, my brothers used to watch me because I'm the eldest in the family. Mama, daughter, uncle. My mother has always sung to us before we eat, before we sleep. So my mother, I would say she's a musician, but it was just my father thinking we should go and be lawyers, be doctors. He loves music, but he wanted us to be lawyers and be doctors, but we ended up doing what we're doing, and we're traveling the world with that. I learned a lot of English through hip-hop, and I learned, I learned a lot of ways to talk to girls through hip-hop, and this is a true story. So we used hip-hop because it had certain slangs that you would use that you wouldn't learn at your grammar class. So I would say hip hop taught me how to speak English. Africa United! Everybody sing! Harambe! Harahare! Harambe! Harahare! So we started doing Luganda rap. People could be like, you can't rap in Luganda. How are you gonna do that? Because the words are too long. So we found a way of getting the long words and make them fit in each bar. It's a blueprint of Luga flow. I would say it's a blessing being a musician, and I appreciate what I do 100%, and I'll keep it going. It's gonna be nice. Dear Lord, we want to bless this entire studio today. We want to bless this wonderful group of people here to promote Saba Saba's music. We want to touch everybody with the energy that only you can give us. May you give everyone in this room, from the production staff to the group, an incredible synergy that echoes across the globe so we can touch the world with one of the highest power performances ever seen. And so it is. Ashe. Ashe. We don't usually do prayers, but uh, this time we really needed a prayer because this was a big opportunity that we needed to do this. Mark. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey,
I always start the shows with a chant. It's talking about uh, missionaries coming into the country or people coming in and this goes until slavery. So I'm just crying out to the folks that we got people coming in that we need to be aware of the situation. I'm crying out. I am crying out. Thank you. Tujababi is an anthem in a way that it, it tells you not to give up in anything you're doing. Just keep going and believe in yourself. So when I'm saying Tujababi, I'm like, I started this and I'm not going anywhere. Tujababi, I started this and you will never put me down because I'm still going to keep going, moving forward. Hey, 
say what take a sour yeah yo. Boom, jump. Walk a time, they say what take a sour yeah yo. The Wavakondo is a song that talks about poverty and fate. And I read a story about a, a man who killed his wife over a piece of land because they didn't have any money and he wanted to uh, sell the piece of land to certain buyers so he can get some money. But they had six kids and the wife is like, if you sell this piece of land, what are we going to do with the six children we got? We won't have nothing. So they got into an argument and fought. And by mistake, he killed the lady. So while he's riding on the border border, that's the small motorcycles, we have those in Uganda, taking the lady to the hospital. He didn't notice that the lady was dead. I just I was like, that's so sad. Somebody killing somebody because of poverty. Then I went to Arizona and I lost a friend in Uganda. And this friend was dear to me. And I just got in studio and that's what came to my head. I, did, I just did it one take. I just did the song one take. I didn't even write it. I just did it. One take. And I said I'll never perform it. I never perform it because it's too soulful to me and I'm an energy guy. So I never, I'm like, I don't want to go to Guava Kondo. I give a lot of upload to Brendan because he loves the song and He's like, you need to do Guava Kondo. I'm like, I'm not going to do that song. Yo, we, we on a set here, we on a time limit. Uh, I, I, let's do that one. We didn't even rehearse that song. And he's like, Saba, you need to do Guava Kondo. As soon as he played that guitar, it came back to mind. And the funniest thing, I don't know the lyrics to the song. As in, I've never really done it, so you, I'm not used to it. But as soon as he played it, everything just came back. Nazawachi, the Nevusakatona man, what you want to say, Obongo? Then you know Chidaba, 
ticket no return mama nyabo neba za katonda nakera kumachia nengla ticket no return neni nyenyo nyizengeza kutambuza talanta neba za katonda okuntu sawa ntu sisa olugendo luwanvu twacheta kisamani za jena kutambuza ama bibi 1 kilometer gashanks bbd mtv simanyi radio zitu fisa simanyi chebaliko ha obambo gane simanyi Watch you go to Mira Kubin to Gamani Tolina. Watch you go to Mira Kubin to Gamani Tolina. Watch you go to Mira Kubin to Gamani Tolina. Watch you go to Mira Kubin to Gamani Tolina. Watch you go to Mira Kubin to Gamani Tolina. Watch you go to Mira Kubin to Gamani Tolina. Watch you go to Mira Kubin Amana, bagena musomero kusoma, omunafu osumagira, base kuleka, chine chafe chigari, kugena na bagenda, sama nyene sate gende, bachi itaka kayola, omunafu wakwata, bachi gole mela kubintu, amanyi tolina, kuno wevu ramu, obwafe, otutambuli ramu, mani, olusi mpuli langambuse, haa. Baku baruari, bogeda, tinaro masi, haina sirimu, bogeda, Tegundi, banyo chai, baso mama uli de, beba sanga bi bogeda, ne owa vukondo, owa vukondo, owa vukondo, owa vukondo, owa vukondo. Watch you go to Mira Kubin to Gamani Tolina. Watch you go to Mira Kubin to Gamani Tolina. Watch you go to Mira Kubin to Gamani Tolina. Watch you go to Mira Kubin to Gamani Tolina. I love this song. It's the first time doing it on stage, on sound stage, and I feel so happy to do it. Poverty and Fate, Obwapu Kondo. Thank you. Harambe is togetherness. Let's unite as one people. I did Harambe, and it was my first song ever that you had people that is a little bit, you know, you go and dance. You know, it's got women in the back. I never done that before. So Harambe, I'm talking about let's unite and be one. So it's more about deportation, immigration, uniting as one. Let's stop the fighting. Let's unite as one people. I want people to feel the togetherness, when I'm singing Harambe with my band, we're together in this. My whole band has never been to Africa, and I wish they go to Africa next month or something. But they play and they feel everything inside. So that's already Harambe. We already want people, because Harambe is about gathering everybody together, and let's make a unification right here. So the energy for Harambe has to be that kind of energy, because we want to unify that kind of togetherness through Harambe. Yeah. 
You know it's ZD. Yeah. Let's unite as one people. That's what it is. I went for Tuja Babia. I recorded the video in that same area. So while I was recording that video, I met a girl, a young girl. She was like, a friend of mine picked a girl at the age of about six months. And she was dumped in a dumpster in a trash can. And I asked him that, oh, Who's gonna take off that child? Everybody's like, we don't know. We're just gonna take the child to foster care. And I'm like, how much does the child need? And they're like, only like, it was about 30, 40 Ugandan shillings, and that's about $25. So every time I went to the slums, I went there to pay, buy milk and everything for this girl. And one day we're out there, you know, I'm checking on the girl, we're chilling, and uh, police came in the area and surrounded the whole area. And everybody was shouting, the police, the police. They are everywhere, up and down. Up and down means one secret guru. They are everywhere, up and down. They've surrounded the whole area. So we started running, and I was lucky that I was a student then, so I had a student ID. But they're like, what, what are you doing here? I'm like, um, I was just passing through. And I went back home, and I'm like, what was he saying? One siwa guru was like, one siwa guru, one siwa guru, that they are everywhere, they are everywhere. So I'm like, that's a cry out. Wow. So I just went with it and I'm like, one siwa guru, chachiri yeri wa police, see? That one siwa guru, up and down, who's coming? That will be the police. What are you gonna do? Muduke, muduke, you're gonna run, run, run. And that's what we did. So that's how one siwa guru came out. One siwa guru is a song that talks about police brutality. And me having the shed zone is just blacking it out and let me express myself in the way that I feel much more 
You don't need to see my eyes. Let me just go wild out for a second. Because that's, that's one of my favorite songs. All right.
So that song I would say, I never say, but I would say Tuja Bali and Wansiwagulu is dedicated to that girl. Ever since I got that girl and moved her in and took her as my daughter, because she's my daughter now, things just began happening. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> I fell in love with uh, hip hop when I, I fought, my father brought a DVD. It was a, actually v, a VHS of a Wild Wild Sound Wild Wild Beat. It's a, it's a breakdance movie, Wild Style. So I fell in love with hip hop through Wild Style. I started as a break dancer. I wasn't that good at all, but I tried to break my legs, and from there. I just fell in love with the Karis one and I started from there and just kept going up. And we started rapping just between the 90s when hip hop was blowing up in Africa, it became so difficult just getting a cassette that is hip hop. We used to walk like more than 10 miles just to go to the nearest guy who's got a, a, a cassette. And I had a neighbor who used to play that kind of music because I didn't know what kind of music it is. And every time I used to go and peep in the window of his house. Hip hop originated in Africa, and I would think we've we've had we've been chanting all our lives. So if you go to the history of hip hop, if you're trying to get a wife, or you have to do poetry, if you're talking about this woman, you have to talk about poetry, so your, the father can give you the bride. You have to say the most beautiful poetic um, uh, uh, proverbs, or you have to say certain words that make the father appreciate you as a person to take her daughter, his daughter. So they used to use poetry, and this poetry was too fast. You have to, you don't have enough time to do it. So you have to go, you just keep going. So I would say, actually not I would say, hip hop originated right there in Africa. Because we use it for different things. We use it for getting brides. We use it for poetry. We use it for music as well. We, we do music, and we have a lot of poetry in the music.
Cutting uh, was a song we made because um, we want it to be on radio. We want people to hear our music. And this producer told us, I won't mention names, but he's a famous producer. You guys need to sugarcoat your music. You guys need to sugarcoat your music. That's why people don't listen to you. We're like, so you're saying sugarcoat, we need to sound like everybody else? He's like, somehow you have to. So I'm like, wow. Me and Babaluku just was so mad about this. That's my other member from Bataka Squad. We went on the side. Did he say sugar coating? He said, we need sugar coat our music. You know what, Saba? We're going to sugar coat the music. To coating. And that's how the whole song came about. Because coating it means you're sugar coating your music. But we're going to sugar coat it. And we talk about all the bad things about sugar coating whatever you have because it doesn't make you real. So in the verse I'm talking about, this girl looked all hot. She put on her makeup. She's caught it. She's coating it. So every time they say, coating it, juicy girl, you're coating it. Last night, this girl did this. She wanted to look so hot. She was driving an expensive car because she wanted to, to, to sugarcoat whatever she was doing, a lifestyle. But we're doing like, we're mocking what people want us to do. We even talked about food. If you're eating food, it better be sugar coated. If you're eating anything, so that's how the whole song came about. And the energy, the energy, just comes in that song. Ouch. Cause 
Panasonic is the official camera of the Africa Channel. 